always be in front of you. Uh, welcome, councillors, members of the public, staff. I declare the meeting open at 8.42. Everyone at this meeting is reminded to conduct themselves in a polite and professional manner, keep communications factual, use the appropriate language and tone, do not use any defamatory or derogatory remarks, defamation laws may apply, and address to the public forum. I ask the councillors to observe the requirements under the Code of Meeting Practice and Meeting Equito. I remind all present that the video recording is an official record of council and may be made available to persons under a public request in accordance with the Government Information Public Access Act 2009. No other recordings are permitted. Basel Council acknowledges the traditional custodians of the Gwendolyn and the Benjilian people of the Nora Nation and pays respects to elders past, present and emerging. The people of the Eora Nation, their spirits and ancestors will always remain in our waterways and, and the land and our Mother Earth. Apologies, councillors. We have two apologies, um, Councillor Jansen and Councillor Barlow. If someone would like to move that apologies be accepted. Councillor Douglas, seconded by Councillor Warner. I'll put it all in favour, say aye. Those against, no. Declare a um, We have no requests, or do we? Oh. We've got no requests for audiovisual. Um, disclosure of interest. Does anyone, Councillor, have any disclosures of interest? Next item is minutes of the previous meeting. Can two councillors who were present at the meeting move and second the confirmation of the minutes? Oh, Councillor Musket, seconded by anyone? Oh, Councillor Curry, I'll put it all in favour, say aye. That's against no, declare it carried. Items of exceptions. Um, we have two speakers tonight. Uh, first speaker is on item CPE 23.013, planning proposal for 776-792-794 Botany Road and 33 to 37 Henry Kendall Crescent Mascot. Speakers are advised that a warning bill will sound when only one minute of speaking time the main speakers who are joining the meeting via Teams app are, are to have their video off and microphone muted until I invite you to speak. Speakers will be reminded from Teams once the item has been concluded. You can watch the remainder of the meeting on Basel Council's YouTube page. If you're registered and a written submission, these have been provided to all councillors. Speakers are reminded to keep communication factual, polite, and professional and use appropriate language and tone. Do not use any defamatory and derogatory remarks. Defamation laws apply to to apply to address these in public forum. So if we could go to the first speaker. Oh. Uh, Mr Michael Fyle, uh, planning consultant for Land and Housing Corporation on item CPE 23.013. Uh, Mr. File. We could go to the first speaker. Good evening, uh, councillors. Um, thank you for the opportunity to address council. Um, I'm a planning consultant and I was uh, working for Land and Housing Corporation. I've largely been responsible for the preparation of the planning proposal that's before council. Um, I'd just like to make a few quick points. Um, Land and Housing Corporation first lodged the plan. Uh, um, thank you for the opportunity to address council. Um, I'm a planning consultant. I'm getting a weird uh, working for Land and Housing Corporation. I've largely been responsible for the preparation of the planning proposal that's before council. Um, I'd just like uh, to make Mr. a few Pike, quick points. We've got um, YouTube playing in the background. Land Housing Corporation first lodged the plan. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit of an amateur mistake, isn't it? Um, apologies. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we first lodged the planning proposal with council more than five years ago. Um, since that time, 
Blacks provided detailed responses to three separate further information requests from Council. Each of these requests has, has required LAC to commission expert reports in uh, urban design, heritage, economic impact. And as I said, this has um, been at the, at the public expense over three separate occasions. Um, we've, we've done this largely because it's a very important project to LAC and also um, we wanted to work closely with Council on um, renewing you know, social housing in the Bayside area. Um, since the proposal was originally lodged, and, th and this is uh, uh, well covered in Council Officer's report, the Council has released both a housing strategy and a local strategic planning statement that supports growth in the mascot town centre. And Council's last shy wide LEP zoned sites up to six or seven storeys just behind Botany Road on Coward Street, which is you know in very close proximity to this site. Um, Council's LSPS also states an objective of working with Land and Housing Corporation to facilitate social housing. I guess it's fair to say that during this period we were, we were very pleased to see these commitments from Council um, and LAC is now seeking an opportunity to, re to renew the existing 26 dwellings on Botany Road and provide a, a mixed social housing redevelopment with a mix of uh, social and private housing. It's worth noting uh, really clearly that LAC's not seeking any additional floor space than the two to one that's already uh, available on the site. We're only seeking a height increase to eight storeys and a removal of the requirement for a commercial or retail frontage. The reports that we have, the retail reports and economic reports we have support this and say that, that retail or commercial is not only unviable on the site, but will detract from the existing town centre. Um, we're supportive of the proposal for a master plan put forward by council staff. However, and I myself have participated in many town centre master plans in the course of my career, and it's my professional opinion that this master plan will be unlikely to result in any more detailed analysis of this specific site, which has been studied in depth over the past five years. And basically what we're seeking is a council decision to progress this site concurrently with the master planning in order to facilitate a much needed supply of new social and private housing. And I guess I would pose a question to Council, like we've heard a lot in the media about the housing crisis and the calls for more social housing and more private housing. This, in my opinion, is, is a prime site for redevelopment. And if not now, like when? When, when is with the master dam be complete? And when would this proposal be progressed? As I said, like we can't see any impediment to the two happening in tandem. Um, really, that's all I wanted to say tonight, but but um, both myself and Fuad from um, Land and Housing Corporation are available to answer any questions the council might have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fall. Um, I'll just ask the other speaker and then we'll ask some questions to the staff. Uh, Mr. Uh, Furad Kabaki, I apologise if I got your, your surname wrong, sir. Yep, I'm here to answer questions. Um, my concern or is that we know that you guys want to work on a master plan and Bodney Road is one of the, I guess, ones that is looking accelerating. Um, is there, even if you're not going to accept the plan, can we actually work somehow in, ta in tandem with your master plan um, concurrently? Because we don't see um, how you would not sort of develop the site in conjunction with what we're doing. And as Michael said, we're not going above what's already in a two to one ratio that's already on the site. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I might just ask Mr. Barber to make some comments. Um, through your chair, um, council, just a quick, um, I guess, picture of what this proposal is about. Um, it's an existing site on the corner of Coward Street and Botany Road uh, in Mascot. Um, there is um, community housing on that site at the moment, and so this proposal um, from the housing, Land and Housing Corporation is attempting to renew um, what is there. Um, the site is 5,771 square metres, um, and it has a couple of street frontages. The planning proposal essentially seeks to, uh, to do two things. Uh, firstly, to increase the height limit from 14 metres to 28 metres. Um, as the speakers have said, um, there's no proposal to increase the floor space on the site. Um, it really just allows the existing floor space that's allowed on the site to be 
um, delivered in a different uh, building form. Um, the second thing that's being sought here is not to have uh, retail or commercial uses on the ground floor, which is um, what the current planning controls would require. Um, Land and Housing Corporation are in the business of providing housing, and so that they're not um, the retail component is not really um, something that they're um, terribly interested in providing, which is understandable. Um, so that, that's really what's being requested here. Um, as the speakers have said, um, Council has endorsed investigating um, the area of Botany Road from uh, Gardeners Road down through the existing shopping strip um, as an investigation area. Um, and one of the recommendations in our report tonight is that this area be prioritised above the other two areas that Council endorsed late last year. Um, so essentially, the, it's not really um, an issue of whether the site has potential. I think we, we recognise that. And as Mr File said, the um, Council's own LSPS and housing strategy do recognise this area has potential. Um, it's really a matter of timing in our view. Um, and, and we would say the doubling of the height limit on a site ahead of a more comprehensive review of the area um, is probably not the right way to go about uh, planning. Um, so we'd rather look at the entire precinct that Council's identified, and um, which includes this site, and then approach it in a more holistic way. Um, just in terms of time frame, um, understandably, Land and Housing are interested in what Council's time frame are, because they're keen to get on and, and develop their site. Um, we would look to start this project in the new financial year. Um, these exercises generally take uh, 12 to 18 months. Um, there's definitely an opportunity to work together uh, with Land and Housing and other, other landholders in this area. Um, there's an opportunity for land and housing to wait until council uh, does its master plan, which is sort of a higher level um, view of what might happen in this area. The council would then normally move to do a planning proposal of its own uh, to change planning controls. At that point, land and housing could do their own and, and sort of accelerate that part of the process um, for their site only, but in the context of the master plan that council's done. Um, so hopefully that provides a little broader explanation. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Marla. It's moved by the Mayor, Councillor uh, Curry, seconded. C Councillor Musket, sorry. If there's no speakers, I'll put it. Yeah, Councillor Thank Mayor you, Curry. Mr. Chair. Um, so, can I just ask um, what was the height, the proposed height, and compared to what's currently there, which is two story walk ups? Through you, Chair, the, the current height limit in the LEP is 14 metres and the proposal is for 28. For 28 metres? Yes. Okay. So I think, um, you know, obviously the recommendation, as Mr Barber indicated, we are looking at a more strategic approach to that area because it is vital that we don't um, consider sites like this in isolation. Um, particularly, um, there's, you know, there's opportunity there where there are people who have other um, owners have indicated interest over time as well. So I think um, to do it justice, and and I think there is, you know, um, that's a significant height above the LEP. It's double what the LEP has recommended, and at the same time. Thinking about, um, you know, acknowledge we'll do a whole strategic plan, but there are single-storey residents in all the streets um, behind that block as well. So there's a, a lot of considerations there. So I'm I'm going to put it on the table that double the the LEP is a particular height for a particular reason, and because we need to consider the impacts on residents and doubling that. Um, from my personal view, is um, extreme. I just want to flag that. Thank you. Councillor Warner, thank you. Mayor. Thank you. Um, I've actually got a question for uh, Mr. File, if that's okay. Is Mr. File still online? Thank yeah, you. I'm still here. Oh, thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So through the chair. Um, could I ask uh, what amount is proposed to be uh, public housing uh, and actually whether we'll actually uh, whether the proposal is for it to be public housing or community housing? Yeah, um, I mean the policy had been under the previous government to, for proposals like this to deliver a mixed tenure where the two tenures are indistinguishable between the social and the private, and that was up to 30%. 
Um, we obviously have a new government, so uh, it's possible they they might review that that percentage. But um, there are 26 dwellings on the site at the moment. Uh, it'll the proposal will deliver, you know, approximately 100 up to 150. So you know, you could get almost uh, like a significant increase, almost doubling of the existing dwellings, and and a significant supply of new private dwellings on a, you know opposite a park. So. I mean, that's generally, but I mean, the numbers aren't fixed. It's obviously landed housing corporation is uh, ambition is to provide as much social housing as reasonably possible. I mean, the, the demand is, you know, to, in my own words, it's sort of insatiable, really. It's, and we're, we're full a long way short of meeting that. So sites like these are an important component of meeting that demand. Thank you. And through the chair, can I ask another question? Uh, would that housing end up being public housing or would it be um, uh, would it be transferred to a community housing provider? Um, the look, the lax main focus is delivering social housing, which is public housing. However, um, look, the, the lines are pretty blurred. Like in the northern part of Sydney, all of the social housing is actually administered by community housing providers. Um, and a lot of LAC projects are starting to have a component of what's known as you know affordable housing as well as social housing, which is caters for different different income bands. I mean that sort of is yet to be determined, but without this increase in height, none of it there'll be no additional housing. The site will say exactly as it is, and, that, and I guess that's that's really been our concern because we've been working with council for five years on this site and responded to a number of information requests. So um, yeah. Thank you. Um, I've actually got a question for council staff now um, through the chair. Um, I agree that it is uh, quite urgent to build more social housing and, and actually more public housing as well. So if um, we do go down the path of um, uh, producing a master plan and um, also prioritising it, it as as was in the report, uh, potentially how how much of a delay would that um, cause, or how how quickly could that master plan be produced? Um, through you, Chair, uh, we would do it essentially in two phases. So the first would be um, the investigation to come up with a general master plan, and then if council was happy with where that was going, there would then be changes to the plan of controls, which would be um, an LEP amendment, essentially. Um, the first part of that, um, if we get the, um, the support of council tonight, we'll have to do a project plan for it, but I think that's probably like a 12-month exercise. Um, and then to amend the planning controls, it could be another 12 months on top of that, depending on um, some things that are out of council's control. Um, but as I said, from that point, Land and Housing could pick up their planning proposal um, and make it consistent with whatever council lands on as a, as a master plan and it can go forward from there. So um, I'd say, um, you know, it's difficult to say with these things, um, but it would be in the order of 12 months um, until we were at a point where we had, well, council was, um, you know, had sort of resolved greater certainty around what it wanted to see in that area. Um, that'd be my estimation. Um, just in terms of the housing numbers too, um, just to assist, um, just to follow, we've had a chance to look through the report. Um, the total number of apartments proposed is 152. Um, and 45 of those, or 30%, would be social housing. So that's that's the ballpark figure. Yeah, and there's currently 26 on the site. So the, the supply would go from 26 to 45, and that's about 30% of the total that will be delivered. Councillor Morrison. Just in the report, and I just want this for, for clarity and transparency, so one of the, the three main, uh, it's 14 to 28 metres, which I think is too high. But the second one is curious, allow residential flat buildings as an additional permitted use. So can we just um, tease it out because there's residential flat buildings there and that's not permitted and going from what we have now to 150 odd apartments, if you can just explain what that means? Yeah, certainly through you, Chair. So the zoning of the site is mixed use, um, and what is permitted there at the moment is um, what's called shop top housing. So that requires there to be some other uses in the building, normally retail on the ground floor. Um, Land and housing uh, would like to build a, a residential only, um, and so that requires the definition of residential flat building to be added to that site. That's essentially it. 
but yeah, it's, it's all with the intent of um, not having residential, not having retail or commercial on the ground floor. Just to clarify, so the third point, remove the active street frontage. So if that was to remain, and I'm, I'm just theorising here because we're way, way away from anywhere. anywhere. So if you, if that was to keep there, you wouldn't need to have, uh, you wouldn't need to allow uh, res flat resident, residential flat buildings because the street frontage there. So those two sort of uh, combine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other speakers? I, I just want to make the observation. Um, I'm, I'm concerned in terms of what the, I agree with what the mayor said. Um, we're going from what, 14 metres to 28, and we're only going to have, um, in my opinion, a small amount of uh, public housing in it. We know there's a strong need for public housing, but the good thing about it is a change in the government, and we won't get to the situation where we've got down in Arkley, where the bulk of the units being built are private to residential and a limited amount of um, public housing. So um, I take on board what the director has said. This is a, we have to do a master plan, but um, I personally have to be convinced there's a benefit to the community of going 14 to 28 uh, metres in height. So I'll put it all in favour. So I, those against no, declare it carried. Um, to the two, as two speakers, the um, committee just has recommended um, the officer's recommendation. So thank you for your uh, interest in this matter. Thank you. Uh, next item, councillors, is um, we go back to the agenda, and that's the um, CPE 2312 planning proposal, housekeeping, and other amendments to Bayside Environmental Plan 2021. And there's a recommendation if someone would like to move it. Councillor Douglas. And the Mayor, Councillor Curry. Any speakers? Um, Chair, could we please ask for an overview from the officer? Um, through you, Chair, um, as the name suggested, um, as a housekeeping LEP, it really is about um, very minor administrative changes. Um, this is a common practice for, for councils to tidy up things in their LEPs as things change over time or anomalies are picked up, um, and that's essentially what this is about. Um, there are no policy changes in here. There's no increase in floor space or height or any of those kinds of things. Um, so the, the changes involve things like um, additional permitted uses on, on individual properties, um, there are some errors and misdescriptions there that need to be corrected. Um, we do have some heritage items where, um, again, some parts of the address are not exactly correct, um, so they need to be um, rectified and uh, the mapping changed to match them as well. Um, there's a piece of land in Arncliffe that uh, Council owns and has recently built a new playground on. Um, it was zoned um, R2 in error. It should be zoned for public open space, so that's, that's going to be corrected. Um, there's also land that's been uh, marked on maps to be reserved for acquisition by various government authorities, um, and some of that land has been purchased by them now, so we're just going to take those off the map um, to reflect the current situation. Um, there, That's a summary of the changes, but um, they really are fairly minor administrative changes that, that don't uh, result in any change to the planning controls in terms of development potential. Next one is CPE 23.014, course 4.6 variations to development standards, call the report. Yeah. Just one item, someone can move it. Move, move, move the mover. I'll second it, or I'll move it. And second, I moved by the man, seconded by myself. All in favour, say aye. Those against no, declare carried. Okay, um, planning 
proposal for 200 Cal Street mascot, which is CPB 23.015. Oh, right. I'd like to make some amendments if possible. Yep. Do I need to have a seconder? I'll, I'll second it. All right. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to reject the planning proposal um, for the request for the land at 200 Coward Street Mascot um, and that council takes further engagement with the proponent in the discussion of what community benefits um, Meriton people are going to give to our community. They want to change it into six service, depart service departments and four apartments, which is 10 apartments in total. But in regards to what we as the community are receiving from it, there's no official benefit other than it becoming apartments, which Meriton's going to make the money off and we get nothing. So. I'd like to change. I'd like to change number three that the council rejects the planning proposal and remove items points four and five. Um, the general manager would like to make comments on that. Um, through the chair, um, if I'm understanding correctly, if council's decision tonight is to reject the planning proposal. That is the end of the discussion. There is no further negotiation to be had about community benefit, BPA, anything further. It's done and dusted, and then it's up to the applicant to decide what action they will take, um, whether they'll seek a formal review or not. So you certainly have the opportunity tonight to reject it, but um, I think the wording that there's um, continue discussions or negotiations, that won't be possible. Got a question? Yep. Um, I actually think that that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing because um, I think it is important to have the street activated. I mean, there's a reason why that's in the LEP. It's so that when you're walking past, there are things happening, and you're not just walking past like a blank wall. Um, it's a huge development, and and those. Um, uh, shops at street level actually make a really big difference to how it feels to walk past there. Um, one thing that's happened in those five years is we've had COVID, and so I think that could have contributed to it being difficult to let out those um, shops because obviously there was there was um, you know a lot of changes during COVID and and people wouldn't have had that um, confidence to start a new business and and so on. So I think um, it is possible that um, if this is just kept as it is, that they might find someone after all. I mean, they've, they've got a um, cafe in that corner and they want to keep that. So I think it makes sense to actually keep those shops as shops. Uh, and seeing as, um, you know, their service departments isn't really like long-term rent or wouldn't really contribute a lot of extra housing to the area so um, so yeah I think I think rejecting it wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing for the community because if not I'll put it all in favor so I those things no the clearly carried
Next item is CPE 23.016, Safer, Safer Cities, Her Way Program, Projected Outcome and Engagement Strategy. Moved by the Mayor. Could I have a second, Councillor Warner? Any speakers on that? Um, Mr Barber? Yep, certainly. Through you, Chair. Um, so this program is um, funded by a grant that was offered, uh, Council was invited to participate in. Um, it's part of the Safer Cities program being run by the Department of Transport. Um, the main aim of it is to increase the perception of safety for women and girls um, and gender diverse people um, that are moving through spaces, particularly around public transport nodes. Um, so th the project has two phases. Um, the first one, uh, it, it is a, designed to be a pilot to sort of explore new ways of increasing the perception of safety in these environments. So the first part of it is um, deep engagement with uh, the community around uh, uh, um, locations that we've identified um, to really understand what, what um, the community thinks would make them feel safer in those, those spaces, uh, rather than us making assumptions on what we, what we think might work. Um, and then the second stage is to then choose some of the, those initiatives and implement them um, and then evaluate them at the end and see whether they were successful. Um, so the intention is that this, this will deliver a, um, a suite of measures across New South Wales that have been trialled that other people can then pick up and implement um, and know that they might have some success. Um, so the first phase um, of the program uh, kicked off last week and that was to um, engage with the community. Um, we've identified Rockdale, um, Arncliffe and Mascot stations as the three, three locations we're going to focus on. Um, so what we're doing at this point in time is asking for um, nominations from the community to participate in some um, engagement activities um, in those three locations um, and then we will we'll, um, choose a, a, a sample of people to, to be part of that. Um, one of the initiatives is, um, is called workshops, so we'll actually be walking around those locations with people on a predetermined route um, and gathering, asking questions, gathering their feedback um, in writing and on video. Um, one of those will be during the day and one will be at night time to be sure that we've captured people's feelings and ideas um, in both environments. Um, and then we'll, um, we'll look at that feedback and then come back to Council with some suggestions as to what we might actually do as pilot projects. Um, the engagement plan's attached there. Um, we've engaged someone to help us with that. Um, and there's a range of activities and surveys and things that we're, we're kicking off now. So, um, so the report was really just to let Council know that um, this phase of the project is commencing um, and you'll probably hopefully hear something in the community about it. Uh, and there's an opportunity for councillors to participate as well. Thank you, Mr. Barber. Councillor Musket. Um, through the chair, um, is it possible to also engage conversations with the shops around there, um, looking at what are targeted times of the day that you know there might be people that are not um, positive in their uh, behaviour and attitudes, and in regards to lighting too at night time? So, what is the danger zones that the shopkeepers see? That would be valuable, I think. Good question, and I have to commend this um, initiative. I think it's fantastic. Um, but reading it, um, I did wonder why we're doing 3.30 to 5.30 in the afternoon workshops. I love the idea of a workshop, but is that to capture people's, uh, like, younger people's feelings when coming home from school? Because um, I think as a person who uses public transport from Rockdale on a regular occasion, it's coming home late at night. That's the, that's, that's the scary time as a woman alone. And we're not doing any workshops in the, in the evening, which is really when you want to liberate women from the house. I mean, at 3.30 to 5.30, you've got a lot of surveillance from just open shops mm. and other passers-by. So just questioning why we aren't doing something on even weekend nights because it's quite a different um, a different situation there. Mr. Barber. Um, yeah, through you, Chair. There, the workshops, um, th that is the what we're calling the daytime workshop, 3.30 to 5 p.m. Um, we are doing them at uh, between 6 and 8 p.m. as well in those three locations to try capture that later night time. Just 6 to 8 at night is not for me late at night. I mean, uh, like as someone who attends events in the city and comes home, alone and walks home alone on a regular, well, not super regular because I 
don't have much of a social life these days, but um, it, it, that's the scary time. So I'm just wondering whether we could capture that kind of information as well. Um, through you, Chair, yeah, we, we are aiming to get a cross-section of people involved and um, we'll be looking for people who nominate. We've, we've asked them to nominate multiple generations if they can. So, and we'll probably um, give some preference to people who might come along with their you know, mother or grandmother. Um, so I guess we're trying to pick a, a balance there in terms of people being willing to participate. So we're after girls as well, like um, younger um, generations um, who may not want to come out at 10 o'clock at night. Um, so um, I think that was just part of the balance of trying to accommodate people and, and um, get that broad representation as well. Um, but yeah, I understand the point you're making. We are working with the police as well. Um, and any other stakeholder groups that are active in those areas to try and get um, you know, their intelligence and their feelings about what the hazards are. Um, there is also an online survey which is open at the moment um, and anybody can, uh, can participate in that. So we might capture some of that later night um, issue through that as well. Can we, so, um, can we add an area at all? Uh, Chair, we, um, it is a partnership with Transport and we've, we've sort of agreed on this Okay. Um, as part of the program, yeah. Councillor Warner. Um, are you seeking um, expressions of interest now from councillors who want to be part of it? Um, through your chair, uh, yeah, we can take them now. Probably best if you send an email to so we've, we've got uh, a record of them. Just um, in terms of that opportunity um, for, for the surveys open to anybody, um, the workshops, we will have um, sort of like a, a base set up in each case, like a marquee with, you know, water and that sort of thing. Um, and there may be some elderly people who are not willing to or not able to do the whole walk. So we're thinking that councils might um, be able to, to base themselves in that location and, and greet people when they arrive and talk to them after they're done um, and just allow them to, to wander around and give their feedback as they go, but um, be sort of that, be part of that support for the, the participants. Can I be, um, just suggest that um, whatever opportunities are available that they're sort of put into a table and then um, they can be distributed so that way all councillors have an opportunity should they wish to participate. Yeah. Thanks. Any other speakers? If not, I'll put it. All in favour say aye. Those against no, declare it carried. Oh, sorry, what have we play? Oh, okay. All right, next one. Uh, been no other items. Uh, thank you everybody for their attendance. Uh, at I declare the meeting closed at 9.19. Thank you.
It's a view state setting, isn't it? Yeah, it's a basic setting. Okay. Um, good evening. This is the City Works and Assets Committee meeting on the 10th of May 2023. Uh, to open the meeting, I welcome councillors, members of the public and staff and declare the meeting open at 9.23 p.m. Everyone at this meeting is reminded to conduct themselves in a polite and professional manner, keep communication factual, use appropriate language and tone. Please do not use any defamatory or derogatory remarks. Defamation laws apply to addresses in public forum. I also ask councillors to observe the requirements under the code of meeting practice and meeting etiquette to have their phones off. <laughs> I remind all present that the video recording is an official record of council and may be available to persons upon request in accordance with the Government Information Public Access Act 2009. No other recordings are permitted. And we'll start by acknowledging country tonight. Bayside Council acknowledges the traditional custodians, the Gadigal and Bidjigal people of the Eora Nation and pays respects to the elders past, present and emerging. The people of the Eora Nation, their spirits and ancestors will always remain with our waterways, the land and our Mother Earth. So apologies uh, and attendance by audio visual link. We have received an apology from Councillor Jansen, Councillor Naji, Councillor Barlow and Councillor Sunas. Are there any further apologies or councillors seeking a leave of absence? No. Uh, I think we move and vote on the apologies first. Is that right? So move, uh, can we have someone move and second? So Councillor Fardell and Councillor Curry uh, voting on the apologies. All those say, in favour say aye. aye. Carried. Uh, procedural motion. As we have Councillor Fardell wishing to participate in this meeting by audio visual link, may I have a motion? Would someone like to move and second that the councillor request to, to attend by audio visual link be be granted. Councillor Fadell, Councillor Buena, all those in favour? Yep. Aye. Thank you. Uh, disclosures of interest. Do any councillors have any disclosures of interest that they wish to make? No? Thank you. Uh, minutes of the previous meetings. Can I ask two councillors who were present at the meeting to move and second the confirmation of the minutes, please? Okay, Councillor Curry, seconded by Councillor Musket. Uh, there's only one item on the agenda for tonight's meeting, so we'll move to the next item rather than items by exception. And public forum, there are no speakers registered for the public forum tonight. Move to the first report. Okay, so CWA 23.03013, disposal of asset to Hollingshed Street mascot. This is the officer's recommendation before us. Is there a mover and a seconder? Councillor Curry, seconded by Councillor Musket. Is there any discussion? Oh. Okay. Do we need to move into confidential session so we can discuss? If there are, is there any matters that to be discussed that are sitting in the confidential public open yet? Okay. <laughs> I'll just make that. I don't. I don't need to go into confidential. I'll just um, make the comment, and this is what we talked about earlier around um, the focus of this term of council was to create this, um, create a property working group in order to, as we discussed earlier, in order to determine um, the best, our, the assets and the best use of our assets. And um, this is a, a particular asset um, which has, does not have a um, return of income for council. And um, so therefore the, the working party determined that, um, that any, um, to, put it forward as a recommendation to sell the property and then any return on investment, uh, any return um, for the sale of the property would then go into um, future considerations for property and um, into the strategic fund. So that's the just the context behind that decision. Thank you, Chair. Hi. 
Um, and I, I just, based on comments in the earlier meeting, this is one of the um, one of the strategies that council is using to address a long-term financial problems that, um, that that are reported. And it's a prime example. We talked about it in the in the extraordinary meeting an hour or so ago. And then this is how it comes to fruition. So these funds, once realised, it's not about it's a, it's about realising the value of assets that are no longer fit for purpose, no longer generating a return on our capital investment. It's just sitting there, which is a great asset to have. Let's just set that free, take the take the money, and put that back into our strategic reserve, so we can make some more strategic decisions, which could in, which which could include developing certain sites for affordable housing, um, purchasing, acquiring other properties to expand a park, building more um, um, facilities, and things like that. Um, and secondly, it was it was really just again it's not it's not in the confidential, but as part of that working group, we do have really good, robust discussions in that group, and uh, it was a collaboration um, with a lot of council staff, and we came up with um, with with this proposal, went out, um, spoke to multiple um, agencies to get the best advice with the best value return for our community rather than just first in best dress. It was a really good um, example of what this working group is all about. So if you can please pass on back to the teams that it's really appreciated the thought and the insights that's gone into getting it to this stage of, on behalf of the, the community. Thank you.